Hello and welcome back to the academyofworship.org YouTube channel. My name is Chris. Today we're going to be continuing in the Guitar 101 series. We've talked a lot about the neck and today we're going to be graduating up to the headstock. Today we're going to be talking about tuning pegs and the tuners on your guitar. Now these are obviously for tuning your guitar if you didn't know that, now you do. There's a lot of different kinds of tuners out there and today we're going to be talking about just a few of them. What are the things to consider if you're thinking about maybe replacing them on your guitar or even maybe just looking at the ones that are currently on your guitar. We'll go ahead and start with the one that's in my hands. These particular tuners are from a company called Grover. There's many companies out there. A few things to consider when you're looking at tuners. One is, are your tuners in a three by three configuration or do you have a straight six, which they are in most Strat style or Fender style guitars. Now, one of the main things that people will talk about on tuners is going to be the gear ratio. Most modern tuners are gonna be in a gear ratio of 14 to one, 16 to one, 18 to one, somewhere in there. And what that means is the first number is how many turns you have to make on the tuning key here for this post to make one full revolution. On a 14 to one ratio, you'd have to turn this 14 full turns for this to go around one time. Now, in vintage guitars, they have a much lower ratio. Modern guitars, like I said, are in the 14 to one, 16 to one, 18 to one range. They can go as far as 39 to one. With a higher ratio, if you make small adjustments, you'll get very small tuning adjustments. But on vintage instruments, large changes make very large tuning changes. So it just depends on what you like. Now, something to keep in mind, if you do go down the locking tuner route, you need to make sure that you're your nut here, which we haven't talked about, is something that allows the string to pass freely over it. Now, in this case, I have a tusk nut, which is made out of a Teflon. It allows the string to freely pass through it, meaning it doesn't get hung up here if the string tension is released. So for instance, if I use the tremolo on this guitar, which we haven't talked about yet, and I use a whammy bar or some kind of tremolo bar, and I slacken the strings by dive bombing it and then bringing it back, the tension on the strings is gonna be lessened and it's gonna slip past this part on the guitar, the nut. And if it does that and doesn't come back when I release it, to the exact same place, the guitar is gonna be all out of tune. So in the case of locking tuners, they work really well because the string doesn't have very far to travel. It can't loosen on the peg, and if you have a nice nut, it comes right back and stays in tune. So keep that in mind if you're going locking tuners. They're only as good as what you're doing before the tuners. Now, if you're considering replacement tuners on your guitar, one of the things you can look at is actually the post height. The post is this part right here, which actually has the string wrap around it. Some posts, they're all the same height off the guitar. For instance, this guitar. They have staggered height posts, which means two of the posts are long, two of the posts are medium, and then the last two are actually pretty short. Now, I'm not gonna get into it right now, but the angle at which the strings meet the tuners is important for tuning stability and things like that. But just know that if you get some staggered tuners and you put them on or have them installed properly, your strings may not need a string retainer or a string tree. Lastly, we'll talk about why you'd even want to replace your tuners or why you'd get new ones. Usually it's because your current tuners are malfunctioning. If you have an older guitar or a vintage guitar, one of the things you may want to do is replace your tuners with a higher ratio tuner to make it feel a little better, or you can actually buy drop-in replacements from plenty of companies. It just depends on what you're looking for. You can also have different colors depending on the color scheme of your guitar. Maybe you're changing it. There's gold, matte black, shiny black, shiny silver, red, purple, plaid, but you can get what you like. Some tuners, if you get them and they're different from what you had, for instance, on this guitar, I actually had to drill bigger holes in the headstock to allow them to fit because they weren't drop-in replacements. So keep that in mind if you are gonna change them out. Now, just like in our last video, I'm not gonna recommend that if you have no experience to go drilling holes in your guitar or replacing parts of your guitar. If you have a need or your instrument's in disrepair or maybe it doesn't feel right, take it to a trained luthier or someone qualified to work on your guitar and let them do it. But that's pretty much it on tuners, but there's plenty online, so go check it out. Read up if you wanna know more about what brands are out there, what types, what shapes, what colors, all that stuff is out there. Please like, subscribe if you haven't already, share this video, and we'll see you in the next one. God bless.